All right, go for it. Well, first, thank you very much for inviting me to come. I was quite surprised to see a few familiar faces here. Uh, for me, this is very new because it's, uh, I never used this technology before and I've never done it online before. So I was trying to organize a presentation at the same time learning the, the tools and everything. So I hope everything goes well. I am from Belo Horizonte, uh, the capital of Minas Gerais. I live here and I grew up here. And I'll start with the beginning of everything. I, uh, I was a boy in Belo Horizonte that uh, I was very shy, still am a little bit, and I was full of doubts. Uh, I felt like I lived in a very small world. And at that time, when I was, before my exchange, uh, Brazil was going from one economic crisis to another. Um, we are just in the end of the military regime, the, the dictatorship in Brazil. And uh, we are in a very closed and conservative society. But despite all of this, I lived a, a very happy uh, childhood and teenagerhood. Uh, but I, I was also full of dreams and I wanted to go away. I wanted to explore the world, to see different things, to be uh, this, everything here was very small for me. And uh, at that time, being an exchange student was going to the United States. And what United States was like a model to us, like uh, the movies and Disney World. And one day I received a call from the chairman and he said, I got a place for you in Canada. Do you want to go? And I said, yes, because I knew if I said no, I, I, I wouldn't be sent anywhere. So I said, yes, I hang up the phone and I went like, okay, where is Canada? <laughs> and then I um, started to expect, how is this uh, exchange is going to be? And then in 1987, I was finally an exchange student in Canada. Um, that was me. Can you see? Um, so in, in Canada, I experienced a lot of totally different reality from what I knew, starting from the cold weather, um, I remember getting to Canada, being, being taken to my home, my new home. Uh, I was introduced to everybody, uh, to the dog that could understand more English than me. And I was left alone in my room. Um, I looked outside the window and I thought, what the hell am I doing here? But for most of part, um, my exchange uh, year was like a dream. I, I, I loved all the way through and uh, despite all the challenges I had, uh, sometimes like I, I, I was having a hard time and I, 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 I dreamed like I had a nightmare that I was back in Brazil. Then the next day I was all happy again. Um, I can't say I was the best, the greatest exchange student. I can't even say I would be selected if there was a selection when I, I went. But uh, one thing I had that differs me from a lot of the exchange students today is that I was always very grateful. Uh, and that opened a lot of doors for me. I remember leaving my first host family I, I went to give them back the keys and they said, keep it. This is always going to be your home. And 
few years later, when I came back to visit, uh, I made them a surprise. When they came home, one afternoon, I was sitting on the sofa. I still had the keys. Um, today, I cannot imagine my, my life without having been an exchange student. It changed everything for me. But there was a problem. After seeing and experiencing so much, uh, I wasn't ready to come back to my ordinary life. I came to Brazil and I was totally lost for a while. And then I met a group of people uh, called Rotex. And that was very, very helpful for me. They helped me to settle back and at the same time to still live the dream of the exchange program. Rotex in my city is really big. Uh, we have two big districts and there are about 80 exchange students coming back every year and the exchange students from other districts that come to my city to study. So at least we're having at least 30 new members in Rotex and people there uh, became my, my, my good friends and I became the president and I became the president. Uh, and I brought to Rotex a, a trip I organized myself the year before. Uh, a trip to Iguazu Falls. Uh, and th there's some interesting things about this picture. Uh, you see the, the tall guy, uh, the, the tallest guy on the back, he was a blind exchange student and he went with us. I was only 18 when I organized this trip and I took the exchange students and also a big responsibility to take this black, ex black and blind exchange student. The other guy here with the blue hat is my good friend Peter. He, he lives in, in my city now and we are very good friends. Uh, since 1988. So, uh, in Rotex, we started organizing the tours. And uh, in, we filled up a gap on the Brazilian Youth Exchange Program because there were no tours. And soon we were organizing tours for all the districts in Brazil and was a big responsibility for a group of teenagers, not, not teenagers, but young volunteers. And we decided to run it as a business. And for three years, we are an informal business. When I say we, uh, I mean three, three of the former presidents of Rotex. And, and then one, one of those, partners left and we, we, we started our formal business right when I graduated from law school and I had no knowledge, no experience. I didn't stud, study to be an a entrepreneur. I, I learned everything on the go and three years later, uh, the two partner, partners went their own way and we, I started Terra Brazil. Um, at first, we, I, I, I did a lot of tourism stuff, not with Rotary, but then the, in the year 2000, I got back to Rotary. And Rotary became bigger and bigger, organizing trips for exchange students. And Few years later, it was my only source of revenue. Um, and then we we have like uh, today in Brazil four tours to to the exchange students. We have the tour to Pantanal and Bonito, and Pantanal is a big, big and vast flatland that during the rain season it floods. And now this water brings to Pantanal a lot of wildlife. 
is the biggest concentration of wildlife on the American continents. Unfortunately, we never saw this exchange student again. This is uh, our, the, the, where the Pantanal is located, the exchange students fly to Campo Grande. And from there, we ride to Pantanal Bonito. We stay in a lodge far away from everything in the most beautiful parts of Pantanal, right there at the lodge. You guys can see many different types of birds and animals. And from there, we start exploring. We can see, uh, we can do like horseback riding, hiking. Uh, we start the, the, the program very early in the morning because it's really hot there. And so the kids uh, before lunch have a chance to go to the pool. And then we always offer them typical foods from where we are in Brazil. And in this case, in a wood burning stove, after lunch, they can have a siesta at the hammocks and then start going again for the activities like the piranha fishing, the boat rides. We can see the animals that live close to the river, the safari rides. But now it's a little bit like Africa. It's different from the Amazon. You can see animals from far away. Sometimes we find uh, anaconda. And when doing the alligator spots, spotting, we found this baby anaconda one day crossing the road. At night, we eat typical Brazilian barbecue have a fire, and then we go to Bonito. Bonito is a place where everything is related to water. Many waterfalls, rafting. This guy gave us a speech about his project to, uh, to help to preserve the, the, the snakes. And at the middle of his presentation, he brings out his rotary jacket. He was an Austin exchange student in Australia. So the exchange students can have a picture with the snake. And this is one of the most amazing things in, on how the trips are organized. They snorkel on the Prata River. The students snorkel for two hours and two kilometers going down a river. And they don't even have to swim because the water takes them down the river. In Bonito, there, there are a lot of nature as well. And typical food. Uh, there you can see the running water keeping the salad fresh and cool. And there is the Northeast trip. That's the most popular trip that goes to the uh, beautiful beaches of the northeast of Brazil, but we also visit the capital, Brasilia, which was built in a, in a shape of an airplane. Brazil is a very modern city in the middle of Brazil. We've, we go to the place where our president works. I know we don't have a very popular president right now, this is the Supreme Court and the National Congress where we go inside to visit the House of the Deputies and the Senate. Brazil has a very modern architecture. And we take the ex exchange students to see, for example, here the Ministry of For Foreign Affairs the house of our president, beautiful church. And then we go to the interior of Brazil, the state of Bahia, there is a place called Chapada Diamantina. We stay in the historical Lençóis, the birth of the diamond exploration in Brazil. It's like a Grand Canyon. 
but instead of desert, it's green, full of water, with natural water slides, caves. Students can also snorkel in a cave, do a zip line. And then we're finally at the beach. This is the natural swimming pools, two kilometers away from the coast in a shallow area. This is the city of Maceió. Uh, we try on the trips, not just organize uh, sightseeing. We try to make the trip as an experience. So we, we teach the students how to surf. There is a, a teacher, an instructor to teach them. Uh, we stay in a lodge very close to the beach. And a lodge is the way most of the Brazilian use accommodation in their summer. It's a small uh, pousada, what we call it. And in this case, we have the lodge only for our group. At night, we take the exchange students out. We have a band playing for them and we teach them how to dance the typical Brazilian dance of forró. This is the highlight of the trip, the buggy ride on the dunes. It's uh, something that the exchange students love to do. It's very exciting. The, the buggy goes stopping for pictures and goes like a roller coaster really, really fast. They can do a camelback ride on the dunes. They can do sandboard. So this is Natal. And when we go there, we also offer them typical food from the place. There is not one Brazilian typical food. Everywhere you go, it, we have different food. This is the biggest cashew tree in the world. It's all one tree. How do we know it's one tree? Because they made a DNA test in every branch and they found out it's the same uh, tree. Everywhere we go, we have local guides to explain them much better than the coordination can do. Uh, we teach them stand up in one of the most beautiful beaches in Brazil. Also, as part of uh, us trying to make them having an experience instead of just doing sightseeing. Exchange students, they have lots of energy. If you leave them uh, with a lot of free time, they'll figure out something bad to do. So we have activities all the time. And at night, we have a DJ play for them in a very special place, right on the beach, what we call a luau. On the trips, there is a lot of culture as well. Uh, we go to historical towns. Every, different, every uh, place in Brazil has a different dance, typical from the place. This is the canyons of Xingó. It's uh, the second biggest river in Brazil. It's, it was dammed uh, to make a hydroelectric plant and this dam uh, made a lot of uh, canyons in this river and it's inland in a historical place. We try also to give the students uh, a notion of ecology and preservation. This is the Tamar project to preserve the sea turtles. Salvador, the first capital of Brazil, a lot of history there. Uh, the biggest uh, Afro-American influence in Brazil. Porto Seguro, the first city of Brazil, the biggest beach tent in Brazil, a, a place where we also take the students to go out at night to have some fun. 
a lot of handcrafts to buy. Uh, they have the opportunity to see the different fruits in Brazil. I don't know if you know this fruit, but probably every one of you have eaten that. A lot of you have eaten that today. This is the cacao that makes chocolate. And also, not just small lodge, but sometimes we take students to good hotels so they can have more fun and, and see different types of accommodations, more surfing class. And then we are finally in Rio, one of the most beautiful cities in the world. And we do a lot of stuff there with the kids. They take great pictures on the Christ. Also funny pictures as well. Copacabana Beach. Uh, the Museum of Tomorrow, a very interesting museum, was made to the Olympic Games. And this museum is an interaction of the today and tomorrow. So this is all Rio. And Rio, it's, uh, we have a different type of accommodation as well. In Rio, uh, instead of staying in a hotel, the, the students stay in apartments. And we give them money. They buy their own breakfast. And they cook. There is a kitchen at each apartment. And they cook. And they share food. And they cook typical food from the countries. And to finish the trip, we go to this bay and stay in this lodge in Angra dos Seis. And we do around the bay uh, in this boat that we board from our hotel to explore the islands. When you find an island, they jump from the boat, they swim to the island, and they have lots of fun. At night, for the last night of the party, we are going to have another luau a party for them. We also have a DJ to play their music. The third trip is the South America Adventure. It's a trip that we visit seven different countries in South America. And it's organized also to the other uh, uh, countries of South America that travel with us. Uh, like Argentina, Paraguay, Uruguay. We visit Santiago, the capital of Chile. The Atacama Desert, the dry, driest desert on earth. We visit its attractions. There are places on this desert that has not seen a drop of water for 40 years. Then we go to Bolivia, the Titicaca Lake, the highest navigable lake in the world. This is the Straw Islands. We visit Cusco, the capital of the Spanish Empire in Peru, and also the capital of the Inca Empire as well. That is the Condor the biggest flying bird in the world. And then we take the, this train, is the train, the only uh, way to go to Aguas Calientes, the city that is the entrance of Machu Picchu, the lost city of the Inca, Incas. We visit La Paz, the highest capital of the world, the capital of Bolivia. And from the driest place on earth, we go to a place full of water, Iguazu Falls, in the border with Argentina. 275 falls together. You feel the earth shake from 30 kilometers away from the falls. We see it from Argentina, we see it from Brazil, and we see it from the middle doing this exciting boat ride. The capital of Paraná Straits, state, Curitiba, the capital of Santa Catarina state, the island of Florianópolis, the biggest amusement park in Brazil. 
And then we are in the Brazilian Europe, the south of Brazil, Gramado and Canela, where there is a lot of European immigration and where students can have lots of fun in the snow land, for example. It's a artificial uh, skiing and everything. Also with a very beautiful nature. Uruguay, Punta del Este, it's part of our trip, Colonia del Sacramento as well. And then we're going to make international trip by boat. We go from Uruguay to Buenos Aires, the capital of Argentina, and we visit there it, its main attractions, like La Bombonera, the soccer stadium, and the museum inside. And this is the Opera House of Buenos Aires. We see a beautiful tango show. And then the last trip, the trip to the Amazon. It's all made by plane. We first visit the pres Presidente Figueiredo, a town in the Amazon full of waterfalls and caves. We walk in the Amazon jungle from one waterfall to another. And the students have lots of fun there. This is the Manatee, the Opera House of Manaus. The biggest fish in the world, the National Institute for Amazon Research. In the Amazon trip, you also take them to see a show and they have lots of fun. And then we take them on a boat tour for five days and five nights. It's where they're going to really experience the Amazon. The Amazon is not a, an ordinary place. 60% of the life in this planet is in the Amazon. Five out of the 10 biggest rivers in the world are in the Amazon. And I'm not talking about Brazil, I'm talking about only the Amazon. There are spiders so big they can catch a uh, bird. There you can find the biggest snake in the world, the biggest fish in the world, the biggest leaf in the world. The numbers are just amazing. And inside our boat, we are going to have a full service, breakfast, lunch, and dinner. The students will have the chance to eat acai, natural acai. I don't know if you guys are familiar with acai. It's very popular in Brazil. And you can find it, it in Starbucks in America, the acai juice. They are going to sleep in hammocks for five nights, four nights. And, and there in the Amazon, they'll have the chance to interact with lots of different types of animals. We spent an afternoon in the Indian tribe. They interact with the Indians, the children. They swim with the children, play soccer with the Indians, get their faces painted, eat their food. And we have the small boats to go deeper into the jungle where the big boats cannot go. We also have piranha fishing. And then this is one of the most amazing things they do is this survival course in the jungle. They will be for a whole day learning how to survive. They will learn how to find good water to drink, delicious food, fruits from the Amazon, 
the, the delicious fish, they learn how to make shelter because in the Amazon, in the summer, it rains every day. In the winter, it rains all day. So one of the most important things to survive is to learn how to make shelter. So you keep yourself dry. How to climb a tree to get the fruits, how to make fire. This is, this is a, a visit to a community that makes the mentioc flower, the tapioca. We visit the Indians, we visit some uh, villages from people who live in the Amazon. This is the rubber, how people used to make rubber in the former times. This is our boats. And this is an experience they will not soon forget. To swim with the pink dolphin from the Amazon. And when the night comes, on the last day of the last trip, we are going to make a special event for them. We prepare on a beach, on a river beach, uh, a party for them, a luau. And we bring all the structure into the beach. And when we leave, we take everything with us. And they will have the chance to say goodbye to the friends they met during their exchange. And that is the last opportunity. Most of them will see each other when they are in Brazil. This is uh, our coordination. Uh, on the trip, we're, we're, we have offered them like backpacks, hats, uh, water bottle, and this is the talent show. And this is the certificate they get for surviving the trip. Uh, as some of you know, uh, we started in 2009 a company in the United States. And that company has tours to the West Coast, to the East Coast to Hawaii and a ski trip. All the trips are, uh, we do exactly the same thing we do in Brazil, we do it in the United States. We also have uh, buses uh, that we use to have our trips. And this is our, our logo. Uh, that's it's kind of new. We started that logo a few years ago when we made, we we're 20 years old. Um, so our goal is to show the students a different part from where they live. And we, are, we always focus like on their behavior we, when we leave a hotel, when we leave a restaurant, we want the kid, want the people there to say, that was a good group that came here. And we have a, like a three hour, hour orientation meeting. Uh, we have lots of rules and procedures. Uh, we encourage ecological awareness, language learning, fellowship. We have many different activities for them during the trip, like the talent show you saw. We film all the trips and we make a video for them in the end. Uh, it would be much easier just to do a regular trip, but we're not a regular travel agency. We are a company that organizes tours for Rotary Exchange students. And we do a lot of stuff no, no other travel agency does. Um, during this time, uh, we learned a lot about Rotary, how Rotary works, and we've been going to conferences where 
a lot of them, I met many of you for the past 20 years. I've been going to every international conference except one since the year 2000. Uh, I've been going to every Brazilian meeting. Uh, I've been going to NIAM since 2005. I've been going to IMA. I've, I've gone to seven different IMAs. Uh, and other meetings, different meetings. During this time, I went to 40 different countries. And I met uh, wonderful people, wonderful friends in Rotary. Uh, I learned that Rotary needs personal contact. People need to see your face. But it was very hard sometimes being away for such a long time, having to stop things in my life and go away and travel and travel, living more in, inside the hotel than inside my own home. It was an ex, uh, it has been exciting life, uh, but it also uh, cost, cost me a lot of uh, things that I missed during this time, but I, I cannot complain. And now, we have the coronavirus, something that came to change everything. Uh, I, I've been through crisis before, like 2001, September 11th was, was, was hard. Uh, in Brazil, we had some chaos, chaos in, in, uh, with the airplanes in 2006. Uh, and we have like security problems. Um, uh, in Sao Paulo, one time we, uh, we had a, a tour going, and 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 the city was like kidnapped by trapped dealers, and it was really hard to be there at that time. So. It, it wasn't the first time we went through a, a crisis, but nothing like that. But since uh, the youth exchange was getting smaller and competition was getting bigger, I was always preparing myself for the day that I wouldn't be able to do the trips anymore. And this crisis didn't get me totally off guard, but I, I'm, I'm afraid next year there is going to be very little exchange. And I'm planning myself, I'm planning to hibernate for one year. Uh, I, I, but I plan to come back, to come back, but probably it will take a year, probably to be in 2000, and 21. I hope I don't went uh, over the time that you gave me, and I'll be happy to answer questions. And sorry about my my English. I have been home so so long that it's kind of out of out of shape. And thank you so much for listening. Well, thank you uh, very much, uh, Fred. That was really interesting. Yep, everybody can give a round of applause. Um, yeah, I think I think you're in a a challenging time, and uh, I think you know I, was it Brazil that had the Zika virus um, back with the Olympics, and and um, that was a challenge then. But it can't be anything like what the coronavirus is doing. It's just shutting so much down. Does anybody yeah. have any? Does anybody have any questions that they want to ask Fred? I don't have questions, but Fred, you offer experiences, which is what I think our kids want. And um, I, love, I love seeing the photos. They were great. Well, Fred, I, I want to thank you so much for you, the presentation. Um, we're, we're all feeling travel starved. <laughs> and, 
And um, I have not been to Brazil. And so it was a, a delight to see the beautiful photographs mm -hmm. of your country and to realize the diversity of um, your ecology and the diversity of the landscape and the animal life. What a wonder wonderful, wonderful program. And I, um, and oh, by the way, your English is beautiful. <laughs> mm -hmm. I, um, do you, ha have you considered um, changing your business model to also include tours for Rotarians, not just the exchange student, but the Rotarians, because I would sign up for any of those except the survival course. <laughs> Yes, uh, do, when doing tours for the exchange students, uh, my hands were full. I, 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 it came to a point where I, I could, uh, I, I couldn't have more resources, more staff, and and uh, with what I had, at the same time I. I had all my time involved with the exchange students. So I, I, I'm, I'm a person that is very hard to say no to new challenges. And I try to keep myself the few last years from getting more things uh, because I was overwhelmed already. Um, we, now with uh, the, with the, break in youth exchange i'm still have i still have a lot to do i st i'm still reimbursing, reimbursing the kids and that's that's a lot of work and uh for for the next months i really don't think that's going to be any traveling internationally so i'm also taking this opportunity to slow down, to do things I never had the chance to do, and to fix problems I accumulated during all these years. And, and right now, I, I, I need a break. If it wasn't for the, the lives that are being lost, I, I, would, I would think this virus brought a lot of good things for everyone. And I still work a lot. I still doing a lot of stuff, but um, I, I will be organizing tools for Rotarians, but not for now. I, I need to, to get my things straight first. Thank you. Fred, what was a what was a cost uh, for a student to go on a trip like that with so many amazing destinations? What what could a parent expect to pay to send their child on something like that? Um, for the Northeast trip, uh, they would spend around. 10,000 reais. Uh, I know that doesn't say a lot to you, but it would be around uh, less than $2,000. But right now, the Brazilian currency is the currency that has uh, been devaluated from its value the most in the world compared to the dollar. So probably. Uh, when they, the kids had to pay, it would be 2,200. Now it's less than 2,000. So, and that's the biggest and longest tour. And with meals included, uh, with all the rides included. And uh, it is much cheaper than our trip in the United States because Brazil is cheaper. That's the only reason that it, it seems like you almost would be paying that much just for an airline ticket to get to Brazil, <laughs> uh, 
once you're there, it seems affordable, but uh, airfares very expensive from the United States to another country. Does that include, that can't include the airfare then? No, this is, uh, the students are already here doing their exchange. Oh, so, so this is just during the exchange, okay. This is during the exchange. Okay, Yeah. so it's just on top of the exchange. Well, that, wow, what a fantastic opportunity they have. M much more fun than the students that come to St. Croix Falls. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but th th that's uh, why we do the trips. Like many the students that are here, they're in really small towns out of nowhere. And the trips are a chance for them to see a different part of the Bra of Brazil. Uh, they they don't go to make an to be an exchange student in, in Rio or the beaches or something like that. Most of the times they stay in a small town. I was going to say that Northeast trip, the two thousand dollar trip, is a month long, isn't it? Um, yeah, it's almost a month. And that will depend where you departure from. There are many different uh, trips. There are three different trips, and they can uh, take the longest one or uh, one that's not so long. Mm -hmm. Any other questions for Fred? All right. Well, Fred, I want to thank you for being a part of our meeting and sharing all those awesome photos. It was very beautiful there. Made me want to go visit South America very soon. Um, and uh, we are just a very appreciative of your experience and the things that you've done um, as part of uh, Rotary and beyond. And um, I know that this is a challenging time for your industry as a tour uh, guide and a tour agency and we wish you the best um, hopefully this coronavirus will uh, soon see an end or see some sort of a uh, cure for it um, and as Rotary is very intimately involved in uh, producing those vaccinations and and distributing them maybe we'll have a part in that as well so thank you for uh, for being part of our club Can we all give them a round of applause Thank you so much. Thank, Thank you, you everyone. Thanks. It was beautiful. Thank you, Fred. Thank All you right. Everybody. Thanks, Fred. Great presentation. Really was. Thank you. Oh, John, no, sir. So, Fred, I don't know if you know that I work for um, a safari, a company that books safaris in Tanzania, and we have been busy the last two months just undoing safaris, just taking them apart, cancellations. So you're not alone. <laughs> yeah, I know you work, you work a lot and you, you don't get any money and you have to reimburse. Yep, yep, yep. Yeah. it's just a sad state. Yeah. But yeah. thank you so much for what you do for our kids. We appreciate it. Oh, thank you so much for trusting your kids to me. Yeah. Goodbye, well, everybody. Yeah. With that, uh, we'll see everyone next week, Wednesday at 430. And uh, good luck and stay safe. And we will uh, talk to you soon. Have a great day, who, everyone. Who is the speaker next week, Kurt? Um, I don't have that information. Chris okay. do you do you have that information? No, it's a name that came to, to John. John, I don't, you're, you're probably driving. You can't say. I don't know. I can okay. tell you Tom Thorfinson is the following week. Oh, wonderful. I look forward to that. Good. Yep. All right. I have one question. Could we do a bring your pet to Rotary meeting? <laughs> My pet volunteers, I think. So. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Yeah, absolutely. More the merrier. Okay. <laughs> All right. You. Well, thank you, everyone. I am going to uh, close the meeting and we'll look forward to seeing you in uh, one week on Wednesday at 4.30. And I'm sure that the an announcements will be sent out for that very soon. All right. So thanks, thank everyone. You. Thank you. Bye. 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 Bye